Michael Barker, let's have your question. Yeah, this year, the National Local Government Committees of two unions, Unite and Unison, passed motions calling upon Labour councils to set legal no-cuts budgets by using reserves, capitalising eligible general fund expenditure and borrowing prudentially to generate resources. So union representatives have been calling upon our city mayor to do this for years. And so I wanted to know why he's ignored this option. More than this, he's actually laughed at it in council when it was proposed last year. The setting of legal no-cuts budgets could be used to help launch a city and nationwide fight back against the Tories' hated policies of vicious cuts. And unfortunately, Sir Peter Salisbury's only response to these requests so far have been to ridicule the people who've suggested them and then to lie in the media. For example, when this was raised earlier this year, he said that the people raising these issues, these are the big unions, are actually uh, off their trolley or something. I mean, he said as much in the newspaper. OK, so Peter Salisbury, your response to that? Well, the straight fact is that councils up and down the land have a legal obligation to make a budget that balances. And if they don't, the so-called Section 151 officer of that council does it for them. That applies to all councils, uh, and whether or not one is attracted to make the sort of gesture that we're being asked to make, uh, the fact is it is not a gesture that is open to less the city council or any but other could council. Could you not dig and into that's reserves? Why, that, and that's why not... Yeah, oh, yes, we do dig into our reserves, and that's, that, that's besides what we're doing. But that's not what we're being asked to do. What we're being asked to do in these resolutions is to make an illegal budget. And that is the road to disaster. We saw it. Um, do you remember the speech that Neil Kinnock made? Do you, do you remember about Liverpool? Well, we're being asked to do what Liverpool did. And what Neil Kinnock quite rightly drew attention to was the obscenity of the council having to hire taxis to send round redundancy notices. And that's what it leads to, having to send out redundancy notices and close down your services. Well, not only is it not legal, it's not morally right either, and I'm not prepared to do it. When we talk on air many times about you're having to trim here, cut there, whatever it might be, you, you blame it on the government. Ultimately, of course, people see the cuts from the city of council. So what are you doing to try to, to mitigate the fact that you have less money than you did before? What Leicester City Council is facing is pretty similar to cities up and down the land. and It is a level of cuts that we haven't seen ever, not just in recent generations, but ever, in local council services. We are losing from central government the best part of £150 million. And that's every year. Now, no amount of illegal budgeting and no amount of posturing and silly gestures will make that go away. That money just is not coming to Leicester. It's not there to spend. And that is the reality of the situation that we're facing up to. Michael now, that Barker. is requiring us, that's requiring us to review the whole range of our services. It's requiring us to have to do some pretty difficult decision making. But I'm not going to run away with it or pretend that it isn't necessary. Michael Barker? Yeah, I just, I mean, he's made this response every single time. Um, we made it very clear there was a lobby outside the council as well saying that it was a legal budget we are well, how can for. it be, how can it be legal the, if it doesn't so it, balance this is what the unions are demanding a legal budget so to say that it was an illegal budget we're calling for is just plain but wrong if that's to not start a, but, but, but if that's just, but no but, if, but, if, yeah, but if that's not achievable if the money isn't there and it would be illegal to 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 perform a budget that doesn't balance then there is no option. Yeah. I mean, what but, we've but said so far... Ask, hang on, hang on. I back and ask you a question. Just Michael, every just, yeah, single so Labour council second. across the country well, take all their I'll, reserves I'll, collectively I'll, and redistribute them across yeah. different Labour councils, not a single cut would be needed to be made right now. Yeah. And that's very, very important because Labour have to pose the difference to the Conservatives. So the Conservatives Peter, are in question. crisis and we have a Labour council simple who've been question. making cuts Let and Sir cuts Peter, let and Sir cuts. Peter respond Michael to that. has made it personal to me and particular to Leicester. But a simple question to him. If it is both legal and possible, why is there not a single council in the UK that's doing it? Name one. Well, I can tell you why not a single council's doing it. It's because you quoted Neil Kinnock, a right-wing member of the Labour Party, precisely because the Labour Party has moved so far to the right. Name a Jeremy single Corbyn council under any control in the UK that the is doing it. Without the support of a single councillor in this city, that's outrageous. Not a single of the 52 let me just, Labour councillors supported just, Jeremy hang, Corbyn. Hang on, Rory, one second. Just, but let me just dig into this a second, because there's clearly a lot of heat here. But if you... If you say, if you pool all the resources, the resources are there 
for a reason. They have a legal obligation to maintain resources so that if something happens, there's money there to deal with it, a flood or whatever it might be. So if you pool, pool all those reserves and spend them, you might be able to, although it's actually illegal to do it, but you might be able to not cut this year. What happens next year? Yeah, it, it wouldn't be illegal to do it, but the point would be to build a big mass campaign. Just not making the cuts isn't a solution. What you need to do is build a big groundswell of people, just as they did in Liverpool. And in Liverpool, they did build 5,000 council houses during the 1980s, more than every single but they went city bust. in the... Every other city but they went in the bust. rest of the country. Like, Peter Salisbury talked about the taxi drivers and the redundancies. He has made thousands of redundancies in this city. Unfortunately, in Liverpool, none of the redundancy notices that were sent out in taxis resulted in redundancies. Peter Salisbury couldn't even send them out in taxis because the taxis is in dispute with them because he treats the union with utter disrespect. Let's just, get a, little show of, let's just, get, let's just get a little show of hands. Let's just, uh, just, just putting the legality of it all aside. Um, show of hands. Spend the reserves. Not spend the reserves. A few people not sure. Yeah, exactly. Rory Palmer, I heard you, you were exclaiming in the background well, there. Well, it's sort of not quite that simple in a sense, because of course we have to maintain some reserves for you know, those emergency situations, those unforeseen events, but at the same time, we are using our reserves in significant quantity to sustain our services through this financial climate. You know, local government finance can be quite complicated and complex, I accept that, but local government finance is also incredibly simple, as the Mayor has outlined. If the money is not there in our accounts, from the grants we get from government, we cannot spend What it. are you doing to the, fight the, the cuts? Well, what have we been doing to fight the cuts? Well, what I did uh, last year was spend hundreds of hours <laughs> trying to elect a Labour government who would have provided a much fairer settlement for local government. Unlike Mr Barker and his party, who were probably trying to do the opposite, I would challenge Mr Barker, how many doors did you knock on last year to try to elect a Labour government? I didn't count them. I mean, maybe you can keep track of exactly how many you've knocked on, because it's so few. But I spent countless evenings doing it. I mean, what a ridiculous look, thing to ask. Look, you know, how many, I, will, I will leave Mr Barker how many continue doors to, you on? to write his silly satirical blogs about us, which, you know, do provide a little bit of amusement, despite their utter uh, sort of unfactual and fictional basis. But look, you know, we are going to disagree I on this. I think you find I, I, I haven't written on, a single hang on, lie. Hang on, hang on Michael, let Rory, point, let, I'll Peter let you make the point. Lied a I'll let ago. you make the point. Rory, can, well, just finish your point. Look, our politics, you know, is based in the real world as we find it and the situation as we find it and we deal with it uh, within the legal framework in which we have to operate based on uh, a real and sensible understanding of the world uh, as, we, as we find it. Michael, so, you've got one sentence because I want to finish yeah, with another question. I just question. wanted to point, the gentleman at the front was very right about the 106 agreements. This council does not fight to make sure they get the money. For example, when the buildings, 200 odd buildings built at Wheatsheaf, they got 0% affordable housing. In their own documents, they say they strive for 30%. I and suspect... then not long afterwards, they got 20%, and now they're in an agreement with another company who have a track record of not committing to affordable housing. And they're giving away land for almost nothing at the moment. I think, it's I suspect... Terrible. Can, can I briefly just okay. comment on that We Chief one? Has anybody seen that? It's the um, oh, former corpse factory. It is a brilliant conversion. I'm delighted that we've managed to bring that to Leicester. And I'm delighted that that former factory that was so important, the largest shoe factory in the world, has been brought back into life as a place for people to live. Okay, and I gonna, make no apology for that I'm at gonna, all. We're going to pull this question to an end because I just want to get the final one in. Uh, Tina Black. Tina, where are you?